Hey everyone, this is the next topic in our man memory management in operating system series and the topic we are covering today is paging. It is the technique that is mostly employed in the operating systems used today and this is the best technique by far because the previously we discussed that is fixed partitioning and other variable size techniques which have different problems and this is the best approach till now. You can check out the topics of all my videos in the description. Okay, so in this topic we are covering paging only. The next topic will be segmentation in the next video. So let's start with paging. Okay, as we have discussed that fixed size and variant size are both not so good techniques. As fixed size suffered from internal fragmentation and the variant size suffered from external fragmentation. So paging is an approach to solve that. Okay. So what happens in paging is the main memory is divided into small chunks, small fixed size chunks. Okay. And the chunks and so the process is also divided into these exact size of chunks okay so let's say there is a process and it is divided into some fixed size parts let's say 3 MB or 4 MB okay chunks of 4 MB a process is of 15 MB so 4 4 4 and then again 4 the last one obviously occupies just 3 MB. So yeah. So in paging, the process is divided into fixed size parts and the memory is assumed to be divided into fixed size parts also. So the these fixed size parts of the process are known as pages while those of the memory are known as frames. And the page size is always equal to the frame size. So we can put one page into one frame okay so the list of free frames is kept by the OS and so when we say a process has four pages then these four pages are stored in the in four frames in the memory exactly same page size is equal to frame size okay the good thing is that this these are not need to be in contiguous which was not the case before okay some part of the process can be in let's say a sector of the memory and the other can be in another totally different area of the memory they not need to be contiguous okay and this mapping that is which page of the process is to which frame is stored in the page table okay so this page table is maintained by OS of course and for each process there is a different page table okay every process has its own page table okay we can see let's say this is our main memory and as we have talked these are divided into frames okay equal size frames and this is also the size of the pages in which the process is divided. So let's say there is a process named A. And A consists of four pages. So these four frames are assigned to these four pages. Then there comes a process B which consists of three pages. So it's three pages are assigned to these three frames. Similarly for C. And let's say B is now terminated or removed or okay just is removed from the memory so these are then freed now there's comes a process D which consists of five pages okay so as we talked before they need not to be contiguous okay so see so there are three free frames here so these three pages can be assigned here and the remaining two will go here okay so this is the page table okay after this process 
So page table of A is that it is at 0, 1, 2, 3, exactly at 0, 1, 2, 3. Process B is removed, so page table of it is empty. Process C is stored at 7, 8, 9, 10. Process C, that is the page 0 is stored at frame number 7. Okay. Page 1 of process C is stored at page frame number 8. Similarly for process D, and there is another list which is free frame list uh, which keeps the tracks of free, free frames that is 13 and 14 okay so this logical to physical translation is done by the processor hardware okay so now the logical addresses in the programs consist of page number and an offset okay which when translated to the physical memory make up the frame number and offset so, some, uh, <clears throat> these page size and frame size are usually taken to be a uh, power of 2 and it is easy to show that the relative address we discussed in the previous video that is the same as this logical address in paging so let's say there is a address 1324 okay now our page size is 1k then 1k is 1024 so this address becomes 1024 plus 200 okay so no 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 Okay, 1024 plus 300. Okay, there's a mistake here. 1024 plus 300. So the page 0 ends at 1024 and 1324 is page 1. Now, see, page 0 ends at 1024. Now, page 1 starts after that. So, offset is 300. So, it is in page 1 with offset 300. So the logical address should be like page 1 offset 300. Okay. So you can see there is no difference. It's just a simple translation from the relative address before as to new this paging scheme. Okay. So why we use the power of 2? Because power of 2 is as we mostly our memory is in power of 2 and it is more clear to the programmer linker and assembler to translate and make up sense of these relative and logical addresses and it is also easy to create a hardware for it as power of 2 deals in binary numbers and we can simply flip bits to change or get an address okay so hardware can do that pretty easily if it is in power of 2 it just need to flip through some bits and it's done okay so that's why we use power of 2 so how is this let's say an address is of n plus m bits so why n plus m the n denotes the page number and the m denotes the offset okay so if you want to find the frame number the actual frame number to which this page is assigned the physical memory we can find that with the help of the n bits and then we can get the starting of the physical address that is the actual desired point of the address we are looking for is k into multiply by 2 raised to m that is the offset which is also in the power of 2 so we get the physical address like this I'll be doing an example video of how to convert this and how to change this paging scheme to actual addresses so you can check it out later okay I will do it with much better example with step by step explanation okay so now moving on what are the advantages of paging as we can see there is no external fragmentation as the sizes are fixed so 
there is no space in between partitions and internal fragmentation only remains in the last frame which means that as we took the example like uh, a process is of 15 MB and the partitions that is the frame size of 4 MB so it will be divided into 4, 4, 4 and 3 the last frame will have 1 MB of remaining space so that refers to as internal fragmentation so now it just resides in the last frame so it's much better than previous approaches now the problem with this paging is that paging is invisible to the user that user can't imagine its process to be in, as a parts of various pages user sees the process that is the program as a as segments that we, there are various modules that this segment this segment can be shared this is protected this is read only so yeah user sees the programs as segments so the employment of paging is not visible to the user he can't imagine how this is done so it would be better if we can store in the physical memory segments okay if we can store segments in the physical memory so the next technique we are going to look at is segmentation that is in which the segments are stored in the physical memory and it is much easier for the user to visualize it okay so if you liked my video press the thumbs up button or you have some problem or anything or if you just really liked it just comment down below and of course don't forget to subscribe okay thanks for watching